If you saw my last video, then you know that I went to Portland with four other booktubers. On day two of our Portland trip, we decided to go to Powell's, the largest independent bookstore in the world. And since I trust everyone's book taste so much, I thought I'd let my fellow booktubers control which books I buy. I'm in Portland. We are going book shopping today. We're going to Powell's, which is, I actually got some fun facts on it. It is the largest used and new bookstore in the world. And it's so cool because a few months ago I was in New York and I went to the Barnes and Noble in Union Square, which is the largest bookstore in the world. So to go to two, the largest bookstore and the largest independent bookstore within a few months of each other is like my best book lover's dream. And I'm here with so many amazing book besties. And you can probably hear them chatting in the background. Everyone's like getting ready right now and filming their intros and I'm gonna have them all pick a book for me to buy at the bookstore Which I'm so excited for because we all have like similar crossover tastes of like reading romance But everyone also has like different subgenres they read or like different things they like within romance So they're the book experts I trust them fully and I'm very excited to get their rec and maybe I'll do a second video Where I actually read their recs because today is just gonna be book shopping and I also might buy some books for myself A few nights ago I made a list of the books that I think I want to buy today outside of their recs like just for me personally I love to go into book shopping with some kind of general plan of the books that I have my eye on. I always have my eye on books that will help me finish series that I'm in the middle of because as you guys know, I'm in the middle of so many series. And then I also love looking at new releases. I don't know if there's any new releases I have my eye on that are out right now. I know Elsie Silver and Hannah Grace both have new books coming out, but they're not out yet. So if I see any new releases that catch my eye, I will look at them. And then I also think it'd be really fun to get some books by authors that I love, but books that they published a while ago. Like I know Emily Henry has some books in her backlog that I haven't read. I think there's one Ali Hazelwood book of short stories that I haven't read. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other authors whom I love that have old books. That would be so fun to read. But that's all that's on my list right now. And right now I'm getting ready for bed and doing my Curology skincare routine who has kind of sponsored today's video. I just used Curology's makeup remover and now I'm gonna go in with their cleanser. I oftentimes in the summer wear a lot less makeup. I feel like I just have a lot of outdoor days or I've been traveling a lot and I I hate wearing makeup when I travel. And because of that, I feel like it's just extra important to me that I feel very confident about my skin. And then I'm gonna go in with the Hydra Tret, which is my custom formula. I think this is the absolute coolest and most unique thing about Curology. Whenever you sign up for Curology, you take a skin quiz. And in the skin quiz, they ask you things like what your skin is like, what your goals are with your skin. And then based on your quiz, you get a custom formula from a licensed dermatology provider. And I feel like oftentimes with skincare, I never know what my skin needs so I really really appreciate that you do get a custom formula based on your skin's specific needs and then if you do have any questions you can always message your dermatology provider and then last thing I'm going in with the moisturizer I really like how simple Curology makes my skincare routine I like a simple skincare routine anytime but especially when I'm traveling which as you guys know I'm literally doing in this video realistically I'm not going to pack a billion skincare products in my suitcase so if my skincare routine is as simple as Curology has made it then it's so easy for me to pack with me and do while I'm traveling. And you can click the link in my description to get started on your Curology journey. And if you're a new customer, there will be a special offer. Okay, back to book shopping. Oh, and last Powell, fun fact. It also has around a million books, which is insane. And it's the size of about one city block, which is crazy. That's huge. Okay, let's go to the bookstore and then you guys can meet everyone when we get there. We just got to Powell's. I'm so excited. It is huge. We're literally going to be here for hours. And to make it more suspenseful, I'm not going to show you guys what book everyone picks until the very end. I'm going to do a big haul and reveal the picks. But let me pull everyone for them to pick out a book for me. Our first booktuber is Ashlyn. Her book tastes span many genres from fantasy to romance to thrillers and historical fiction. I have been on a historical fiction pick. So I'm hoping that that phase does not end and I don't think it will, but I have a book in mind for you. Ooh. And I know it sounds a little bit scary because it's like historical fiction, like what, but, but mm -hmm. there's fantasy in it, there's Greek mythology, yeah. and there's just like so many layers to it that I think you'll really enjoy okay. it. Okay, I'm excited to find yes. out what it is. That's actually the book that got me into <laughs> historical fiction. No we were talking about like historical <laughs> fiction really intimidates me, but like yes. fantasy is very much historical fiction normally, or it's like not technically, yeah. but like it's very old timey. <laughs> The world. Of wars or whatever. Yeah, yeah so that if I frame be. it that way, I'm like, okay, maybe I could like yes, historical for fiction. Sure. Yeah. Stephen King is like my favorite author. I love him so Yeah, I much. haven't read a Stephen King book. I need to. <laughs> like fall is coming up. I need to. After Ashlyn recovered from the shock that I've never read Stephen King before, we headed to the young adult section for her to find the book that she's choosing for me. 
the book that I would love for you to read. Okay. Ooh, I have never read this book. I don't think I've, I think I've generally heard of it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it deserves so much more love. It's a love story that happens during World War I, but it's told from Aphrodite's point of view. Whoa! Yeah, that's it's really beautiful, cool. heartbreaking. You're gonna love it. <laughs> Then I went to find our next booktuber, Faith. She loves reading mysteries and thrillers, rom-coms, and fantasy, and here are a few of her favorite books. All right, we've got book expert number two, Faith. I feel like I mostly read like mystery thrillers. That's kind of my go-to, but I also really love like magical realism and like YA fantasy. Mm -hmm. I just like to have a good time. I don't love things that are like super emotional. Okay. Just cause like, I don't like to feel super sad. Yeah. Um, so I feel like mystery thrillers are like mostly. They're so like, fun. Yeah. And, like twisty, like genre span, which is yes. cool. Then Faith picked out one of her favorite books for me. Like I said, I'm gonna reveal all the books at the end, but I'm so curious if you guys can guess them just based on booktuber short descriptions of the books. So I chose this book. I don't really wanna say like what it's about because I almost kind of want you to go in a little Ooh, bit more. Okay. But I will just say it is very genre bending. So it's um, it's a little bit like historical, but it's also um, like magical realism. It's a little bit murder mystery. It's a little bit literary. I've yes. heard amazing things about this book. So I'm really excited. And I've so far like loved books that combine a lot of genres. Like yes. that's been really cool for me to mm -hmm. read. It almost gets you into like the other genres that you wouldn't normally explore. Yes. Yeah. So it's really, awesome. I'm so excited. For you I'm it. so excited. Thank yes. you. Yes. And then I found our third booktuber, Shaughnessy. She loves romances and thrillers. And these are five of her favorite reads from this year. I love fluffy romances, I love diverse reads, I love thrillers sometimes, depends on my mood, but okay. mostly those are my favorites. Yeah. You also love a sad book, I feel like, too. I do, or yeah. like heart wrenching, which yeah. I love too, which is not as common. I'm like, I need a break after my heart's broken. Yes, yeah, I, I feel like that. I have to go back and forth between like fluffy and then like break, rip your heart out, like type of book. And of course, Shaughnessy took us to the romance section to find the book she was gonna pick for me. This is the book I decided to pick for you. I'm really excited for you to read this because you've never read anything by this author. And her writing, you will not want to put it down. It has like a ton of different like plot twists, even though it's like a book that you wouldn't normally think has like that kind of stuff okay. in it. I yeah. love that. It's, it's like a romance too, to have like twists. Yes, yeah. And you, I also feel like if you like books that are really heartfelt, they make you cry. Like this is literally giving like soap opera vibes. <laughs> I'm so excited. And our last booktuber is Natalie. She loves reading romance, thrillers, and sapphic romances. Typically I read romance, thrillers, and then like sapphic romance. So queer read. We were talking about our love for Red, White, and Royal Blue. That's yes. like one of the first books I read. Yeah. Same. It's I love great. it so much. So I feel like that might be kind of the road I take you down. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I'm very excited. And Natalie's book was actually out for display, so she found it pretty quickly. I chose this one. I am really excited for you to read it. It's such a cute sapphic romance book mm -hmm. and it's based around sports. So based around soccer, really cute. It's about this soccer player that comes up to a professional team and they kind of fall in love. Never read a soccer sports romance. Yes. Specifically. Yay! I think it'd be so fun to make a part two to this video where I actually read everyone's recommendations. And then I did some browsing for myself because I did want to get some books on my list. I love in bookstores when they have little personalized recommendations from the staff. I had never seen them do it before where they say, if you like this book, try this one. I thought that was very, very cool. And I kept up again to everyone while I was browsing. You guys should definitely all go check out their videos because they all made book shopping videos from Powell's. And then I headed upstairs to the rare books room, which I thought was so cool. It was quite a journey. Powell's is huge, but eventually I found it. They have a $350,000 book, which is crazy. They were storing it off site, but Powell's does own it. It's Lewis and Clark's journal from 1814. And then the most expensive book that they had actually in store in the rare books room was $25,000. And it was also a journal from Lewis and Clark. We just got back from Powell's bookstore. We counted and we got 32 books total between the five of us, which is insane. I got nine. I got nine as well. Four. Five. And I also got five. So I'm about to show you guys all of my books that I got. But if you want to see what everyone else got, you have to go to everyone else's channel. Okay, I'm so excited to show you the books. I know I've been keeping them from you, keeping you in suspense. So Shaughnessy, her pick was The Air He Breathes. Breathes. Like I can't speak, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> the air her the air like, I'm like not saying English. The Air He Breathes by Brittany Cherry. I have never read a Brittany Cherry book, but I've heard of her and I feel like it's so great to read a new author because if you fall in love with the 
book you read, then you can start reading like all of their books. It just opens a door for so many new books for you. It says, I was warned about Tristan Cole. Stay away from him, people said. He's cruel, he's cold, he's damaged. It's easy to judge a man because of his past. I like that because as you guys know, I love like enemies to lovers or like forbidden romance. So the fact he's maybe been misjudged because of his past. And it sounds like it's gonna be a romance that has a lot of heart to it. Cause it says it's guaranteed to make you swoon and ugly cry, sad or like heartfelt romances. Those are the books I normally rate the highest for romances is when they actually really make you feel something. And I like that this summary, it gives me the tone of the book, but I don't really quite know what the plot is gonna be. And I love to go in a book kind of blind. And then Ashlyn picked Lovely War by Julie Berry. And this is a young adult historical fiction romance. And historical fiction has been like somewhat hit or miss for me, but I'm excited to read more of it. I feel like because I've read so many books, anything that I haven't read much of before, lately I've been rating those really high because I don't know like the tropes or like the classic plot points. So I feel like this book will be that because it's historical fiction, which I don't read a lot of. Okay, let me read the summary. Okay, wait, no, but this is also my comfort zone too. There's gods in it. It says, in the perilous days of World Wars one and two, the gods held the fates and the hearts of four mortals in their hands. And I just read Reckless Vows and also The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And both of those have gods. I think gods and like mythology and books are so interesting. So especially for this one to be set during World Wars one and two, but also have gods. It's like historical fiction real world events meets fantasy and that sounds really really cool and then natalie picked cleat cute for me which is a sapphic romance and i actually own this book so when she picked that one i was like wait this is kind of perfect because it forces me to focus on books on my tbr because i know i own so many books that i haven't read let me actually look up the full plot of cleat cute because whenever i got it i got it in a mystery special edition box so i didn't know what the book was going to be so it's a total surprise so it's not like i had previously read the synopsis before i got it it's Rivals to Lovers. Wait, that's so cute. I love that. It says, two soccer teammates are at odds before falling in love as their team gears up for the World Cup. Oh, okay, I see where the Rivals is coming in. Next it says, when she's sidelined with an injury, a bold new upstart, Phoebe, takes her spot. And Phoebe is everything that Grace isn't. And the last thing Grace expects is to become friends with benefits with this class clown she sees as her rival. Okay, I really like that because they're like in competition, but also on the same team. And I'm really curious how they end up becoming friends with benefits. Like I maybe they have like this undeniable attraction. I don't know, but I feel like this has all the elements and tropes of a romance book that I'm gonna love. Then Faith picked The Unmaking of June Pharaoh. And this one also kind of like Lovely War is a little more out of my comfort zone, a little more genre bending. And it says, a woman risks everything to end her family's century old curse. Wait, that's cool. Solve her mother's disappearance and find love in this mesmerizing novel. The only thing Faye said is that it does move a little slower, which I would say the main cause of me DNFing books is if I get bored, but I don't feel like I'm going to miss book. It sounds like it has enough going on to like really hold my attention. And especially if I bond with characters, like I will read about characters I love getting coffee, like going to the grocery store, literally doing anything just because I love them that much. We were talking about how we love talking books with each other because it's so nice and motivating to hear someone else has already loved a book, especially when you trust their book taste, then you're like, okay, wait, now I wanna read it immediately because you loved it, I'm gonna love it too. Anyway, I also got two books for myself. Those were all the ones that everyone picked out for me. For myself, I got Powerful. I started reading Powerless on the plane right here. I'm only 70 pages in, so not that far in, but I really, really like it so far. I feel like it has all the elements of a typical romanticy that I love, and I feel like when I finish, powerless i'm gonna want to immediately start powerful so i was like let me get it now so i can binge read the series and then the other book i got i got a novel love story by ashley poston or poston i'm not sure how to say her last name and i don't know the synopsis at all i didn't read it i was like i love the cover and i also really 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 liked the seven year slip by her like that book was so so good and the dead romantics I can't remember what i gave it i think it was like a four star read for me so she's kind of become an auto by author for me let me actually read the synopsis now Okay, it takes place at a book club retreat. Is that not so cute? It says her car unexpectedly breaks down on the way. Okay, so not quite at the bookstore retreat, but like she's a book lover, which I think is cute. Anyway, her car breaks down and she finds herself stranded in a quaint town that seems like it's right out of a novel. That's really, really cute because it is. Wait, what? The next line is because it is. This place can't be real and yet she's here. The town from her favorite romance series Wait, this plot 
Okay, I'm already so obsessed. I'm hooked. I'm so glad I picked this up, like literally knowing nothing about it. She's trapped in the author's unfinished story. Elsie is sure that must be why she's here, to help bring the town to its storybook ending. Wait, this is so cool. Except there's a character in the town she can't place. A grumpy bookstore owner. Why does literally every line make it sound cooler and cooler? And also I'm like absolutely obsessed with the cover. It's so colorful, it's so cool. Anyway, that is all the books I got. Thank you guys for joining me on this book shopping video. It was so nice getting to film with everyone and get everyone's book racks and their expertise. So a thousand percent, um, go check out all their videos. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.